Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Weber. I'm a medical oncologist and deputy director of the Laura and Isaac Perlmutter Cancer Center here at NYU Langone Health in New York City. Today I'll be commenting on a couple of very nice abstracts presented at the oral sessions at this year's ASCO just a week ago. The first was the uh, study called Relativity 47, which was a randomized study which uh, included over 700 patients that were uh, in frontline melanoma, randomly allocated to receive either LAG3 or relatlimib, the antibody again against LAG3, with nivolumab versus nivolumab alone. And uh, the primary endpoint of this trial was investigator called progression-free survival. Uh, the secondary endpoints were response rate and overall survival. And this was a very well-conducted, uh, well-balanced, randomized phase three trial uh, the, uh, all of the usual prognostic factors were extremely well matched, whether they be gender, age, uh, performance status, serum LDH, uh, tumor burden, and uh, uh, LDH, or rather L LAG3 expression, because it's been shown in prior trials in second line that a high LAG3 expression in the tumor was associated with a better response. And 75% of the patients overall in this study had LAG3 more than 1% in the tumor, presumably mostly on infiltrating immune cells. And 25%, of course, had LAG3 less than 1%, probably meaning that they were essentially LAG3 negative. So again, well-conducted, well-balanced uh, demographics. And in this study, the primary endpoint was progression-free survival. And if you look at the actual data the difference in median progression-free survival clearly favored the combination arm of LAG3-NEVO at 10.1 months versus 4.6 months, that's the median, and the hazard ratio a very nice 0.75, the p-value 0.005, and the 12-month PFS 47% for the combo, 36% for NEVO alone, so clearly a winner for the combination. And the interesting thing was there was benefit seen if you were LAG3 positive or LAG3 negative, which frankly is a little surprising. If you look at the PFS curves for LAG3 expression greater than 1%, again, the hazard ratio 0.75, but we're looking at a 12 versus a 4.7 month median. It's much worse if you look at LAG3 less than 1%, that's a minority of the patients. And there it was something like 4.8 months versus 2.8 months. So not quite as good, meaning the patients that were LAG3 negative clearly had less uh, impressive, less immunogenic, less inflamed tumors. And again, LAG3 is another checkpoint like PD-1, so it's gonna, you're going to do better with that antibody in the more inflamed tumors. The uh, grade 3, 4 uh, uh, treatment-related, immune-related adverse events were about 18% for the NEVO LAG3, 9% for... Uh, the control arm of NEVO alone. And the number of deaths, I think there were three in the combo, two in the NEVO alone arm. Interestingly, one myocarditis death in the NEVO alone arm, and three episodes of myocarditis, presumably not leading to death, seen in the NEVO lag three arm. But again, the distribution of immune-related adverse events were typical as you would expect. Again, 18.9% grade three, four treatment-related adverse events for combo seven or 9.7 for NEVO alone. Slight increase, but again, I think quite tolerable. Bottom line, Relativity 47 was the first phase three study to validate dual LAG3 and PD-1 inhibition. And I think this was a clear winner. There's clearly evidence of greater activity in the combo than in NEVO alone. This abstract uh, was, uh, came right on the heels of another abstract, which was uh, presented by Rhoda Amaria, and that was neoadjuvant and adjuvant NEVO with uh, anti-LAG3 antibody uh, in patients with resectable stage three disease. And again, very interesting study in a total of 30 patients who got neoadjuvant NEVO LAG3 followed by resection, followed by adjuvant uh, NEVO LAG3, something that has really not been done before. And the determination of the pathologic complete response rate and the major pathologic response rates uh, were the uh, endpoints here. And again, small study, 30 patients, uh, most of them with ECOG performance status zero. Uh, the majority had stage 3B and 3C disease and a sprinkling of stage 3D and four patients. Again, the usual uh, population of whom 29 underwent surgery, one could not because of toxicity, which is a pretty good rate. 
And again, the PCR rate was 59%, which is pretty darn impressive with an additional 7% at 90% PCR or better, total of 66% of the patients with a major pathologic response rate. And again, those are very impressive data. And again, if you look at the overall radiographic response rate, it matches the PCR rate, it's 57%. And uh, however, I would agree with the investigator in that trial that the radiologic response underestimates the pathologic response because 66% major response rate, only 57% uh, uh, by radiologic. And if you look at the patients who had a major 90% or more of pathologic complete response at 16 months of follow-up, nobody's relapsed. And the relapse rate in everyone else is a pretty healthy, it's uh, ended up being about 60% uh, at 16 months. So those are very impressive data. And the grade three, four toxicity, we're talking about 26% of the patients had grade three, no grade four, but grade three immune-related adverse events in the adjuvant setting and no significant dose-limiting toxicity in the patients who got two cycles each of four weeks of NEVOLAG3 in the neoadjuvant setting. So very impressive data. And I think that this certainly sets up if NEVO, or rather, pardon me, NEVOLAG3 as a favored uh, neoadjuvant uh, regimen. And it could replace IPI-NEVO uh, as, uh, in my mind, the favored neoadjuvant immunotherapy regimen. At any rate, this is Dr. Jeffrey Weber. Uh, please do call in with questions or comments, and I thank you for your attention.